Hi everybody. Um, tonight I want to talk to you about um, something I get asked a lot about on my uh, Instagram posts and, and that, and that is materials. Um, even though I write down all the materials whenever I post something on Instagram, I um, still get a lot of questions, um, which is understandable. So I'm going to go through kind of some of the more uh, common things that I use when I draw portraits. Um, the first thing to me, the most important thing, uh, as far as I'm concerned, is paper. Um, there are all kinds of different brands of all kinds of different art supplies out there. But to me, um, there's not a huge variation in things like graphite um, from one brand to the other. There may be different ranges or different feel, but um, quality is generally pretty high in all the brands. Um, but paper is something that I think is really, really important to get something good. Um, primarily, I work on toned paper. Um, I do also work on white sometimes. Um, but when I do graphite and charcoal drawings, um, these are kind of the three most common uh, papers that I use. The, the one that I do probably um, the majority of my drawings on is the Strathmore uh, product. So this is the Strathmore Toned Tan. It's a 400 series. Uh, they make all kinds of different. This is the one that I like the most. And pretty much all of my drawings when I do a portrait are 11 by 14 inches. Uh, so if you're if you're in metric, that's 27 by 35 centimeters. Um, these papers, I think, are um, among the best uh, in the world as far as quality. Um, they take graphite. They take charcoal really, really well. Uh, they take overworking. Um, they take erasing well. So these are the papers that I use quite often um, when I'm doing uh, my portraits. Um, the other paper that I like a lot for toned is the Stonehenge. Uh, Stonehenge Craft. Stonehenge makes a number of different colors. There's white, there's um, uh, sort of lighter, like a tan sort of color, but the craft is is the nicest as far as I'm concerned for doing um, white and dark on the same on the same piece of paper. Um, this guy uh, you'll notice is quite a bit darker, um, but it's still a really nice paper. It accepts a lot of layering. It actually maybe accepts even more layering um, than this Strathmore, but it takes a little bit longer to work up your drawings. So those are my two main ones. Um, I also do sometimes draw in white, believe it or not. I don't <laughs> don't show it often, but um, I do like to draw in white. This is uh, 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 Bristol, um, basically any sort of smooth Bristol um, I like. And again, this is a 11 by 14. Um, so, you know, it, it accepts uh, graphite really well. It takes a lot of uh, layers and, and working and what have you. Um, Really, I think that paper is the most important thing. Um, but obviously, you need other stuff, uh, one of them being the pencil. Um, I use, really honestly, almost any brand that's out there. Um, I'm assuming that everyone knows about the grading, but uh, HB is kind of the middle point. Um, the, the H stands for O, and the B stands for BA in French. Um, so anything that is H is hard and anything that is B is soft and the larger the number the softer it gets when it's B and the larger number the harder it gets when it's when it's H. So having a range of 2B, 4B, 6B, there are 5 and 7Bs as well. Um, but for the most part, if you can have a 2, a 4, a 6, an 8, that's probably all you need. Um, I do quite often use these guys. It's Prismacolor. Uh, it's an ebony pencil. Uh, assuming that you can see that. Um, it only comes in one softness. Uh, I would say it's probably a 3B, maybe a 4B. Um, it sharpens really nicely. Um, and then for my white, I only use Generals. Uh, of course, I grab one that's almost all gone. Uh, <laughs> that one you can see better. So that's a Generals charcoal white. Um, it's the only brand that I use for uh, white charcoal. It's not really that uh, I have any particular preference. It's just it's the only uh, white charcoal pencil that I know of. So it, and it works great. So I've never gone looking for anything else. Um, you'll notice that I pretty much always use my pencils in these. These are pencil extenders. You just unscrew them. Uh, you can put a full pencil in there, um, which I quite often do when I start a new one. 
uh, and it helps you go all the way down to a little guy like that. Um, uh, people sometimes ask me how I get such a sharp point. Let's see if we can get this in the frame here. I use this guy. This is a uh, electric pencil sharpener. Sounds like it needs new batteries. Um, I also have a number of plug-in pencil sharpeners. Uh, this is a Panasonic model. I uh, haven't made it for, I think, about 20 years, but to me, they're still about the best ones out there. So if you are in the market for one, you would have to get it used because they don't make them anymore. But eBay has lots and lots available. Um, I'm going to do a bit of a drawing here too. Um, working on this one of everybody's favorite um, arrow wielding Avenger, Hawkeye, um, Jeremy Renner. Um, one of the things I wanted to go over here is people often say to me, why do you do the white first? Well, the reason why I do white first, there's two reasons really. One is um, when I work in color, I almost always work in pastel. And in pastel, I like to work light to dark quite often. Um, so it's sort of in my head, even though, you know, when you work on white paper, um, you always work dark to light, um, or light to dark rather. Um, with this, you kind of have to work this way, um, as well as liking it. Um, graphite goes over top of white charcoal to a degree. White charcoal does not go over top of graphite. So it's, it's partially a preference thing and it's partially a technical thing. Um, now, when I, when I draw in white charcoal, um, it's no different than drawing in graphite. Um, I will use a range of pressure a range of strokes and a range of um, uh, sort of techniques, right? So if I start in here, I I can look at my reference and I and I actually have printed out a photo of Jeremy. Uh, sometimes I will um, I've got a computer screen right here, so sometimes I will um, just fire it up on there. Sometimes I'll print one off. Uh, depends on sort of what mood I'm in. Um, but when I look at the um, at the reference, I notice that um, this line right in here has got some areas of really dark white or some, or strong white. I guess they're not they're not dark, and other areas that are just slightly um, bright. Um, in here, we people always draw eyes really white, but in actual fact, there's very very little bright bright white on his eye. Right, and that's kind of what I'm going to do as far as white now. I know on his upper lid, there's a bit of color here. And some of these, I know that I'm going to go over them with graphite. And as I said, you, you can't really put the graphite down and then go over them with white charcoal, or not very well anyway. Um, the nice thing going back to the paper is that if I do end up going into an area where I've put um, too much white or what have you, I can always erase. Uh, it takes erasing very, very well. Um, and I honestly, I don't think I've ever damaged any surface on Strathmore or Stonehenge from erasing. And one of the things about drawing, I mean, one of the most important things is learning how to see. Um, and seeing what you're looking at in terms of um, is there light in a particular area? Um, there's like just a hint of light in here. Uh, you'll notice that when I draw, I very often go in the strokes, like my strokes go in the direction, um, of the form, right? So this part of his nose is, is sort of recedes back, right? So my strokes are going to go this way. Um, and I know that they are a bit darker in here. Um, while this part of the nose goes around this way. So I'm going to go like that. Okay. And um, you don't have to get all of the white in to begin with, but enough of it so that you can sort of see, make sure everything's good. Um, 
I do certainly come back in later and add more white. And as I said, sometimes I'll have to erase areas uh, and start over again, if you like. Um, but that's the beauty of, of drawing is that there's always an option to do that. Uh, sometimes my lines, uh, my, my um, initial, the lines that I use to figure out where to put everything are a bit dark, um, especially if I'm going over them with uh, with the white. And so I will just take this. This is an electric eraser. Um, takes a couple of double or yeah, triple A batteries, I think. Um, works really well. Um, so this guy's getting pretty small, which means I have to I have to manually uh, sharpen it because I can't quite get it. Uh, in the sharpener, the, there's only a certain amount of distance that I can uh, I get the pencil in to sharpen it. So I'm not sure how, how easy it is to see, but I am certainly varying the pressure of the white, which is something that's quite important. I mean, it's important when you're doing it in graphite, of course, too, right? So when you work in the dark areas, you don't draw everything um, with the same amount of pressure, right? Um, sometimes people ask me if I start a particular area of a drawing, for example, the eyes, um, before I start other areas. Um, not really. Uh, you probably notice if you watch some of my videos, I do often start the eyes first. It's not so much because, um... I have a preference. It's more because uh, the eyes are probably the most important part of the drawing. And if you get them wrong, there's not much point in continuing until you've fixed them. Um, one thing that people often ask me is, do you put uh, paper over top so that you're not smudging? Um, I do. I, I always have a piece of paper or two on my drawing board. Um, this is, by the way, a uh, an architect's drafting board, I've attached a piece of oak at the bottom, so I have a ledge. Um, really anything works. I used to work on an easel all the time, but I just find that this is nice. I've got a nice big wide area. Um, going back to the paper, I do certainly put paper under my hand at times um, because I work fairly fast. Uh, most of these are a couple of hours at a time. I don't find the need. Um, I try to work from left to right, uh, just so that I'm not smudging areas. Um, I also hold my hand up quite a bit and I do have a, I do have a, I don't know if I can show you this, but I've got an oak bar. This thing moves along. So if I really want to, I can put it over top and just rest my hand against it. Okay. So at, at this point, I'm not necessarily too worried about getting all the details right with the white. I'm sort of getting a sense of where I need my whites. Um, so this is sort of almost, I would call this the preliminary white stage. Uh, then I go in and do the preliminary dark stage, then I probably come back in and, and finalize the whites. And then I do all the rest of the actual drawing. Sort of double checking everything here, making sure that there's nothing else that I think is blatant as far as needing white. Now you can see, even just with this, it gives it a little bit more depth now, right? Um, because we've got the, the mid-tone of the paper, the neutral tone, and then we've got um, the white. Uh, once we add in the darks, then it's really going to make a difference as far as three-dimensional. Almost forgot to add whites to the ear. I uh, can't tell you how many times I've forgotten to draw the ear on a drawing. It's very often I'll think, oh, I'm all done, and then I'll realize I haven't finished the ear. So...
probably, he's got fairly dark hair, so I'm probably not going to put much in the way of highlights on the hair. Um, my last video of Benedict Cumberbatch, I spent a fair amount of time um, working on the hair, so I think you get a sense of how I draw hair. Um, this one, I'm not going to draw the whole thing tonight. I just want to... I uh, wanted to address those questions, so I'll I'll lay in some color or some dark here, so you can kind of see how that's done, and then I'll probably wrap up for the day. Um, you can see I actually um, when I draw, I look at everything in terms of shapes. So his mustache, I just basically isolated the shape of his mustache or his goatee. Um, I didn't really, at this point, I haven't anyway, got in the, into it as far as the actual shapes. I just really am looking at lights and darks and shapes, which is, I think, the best way. Um, they always say you want to draw general to specific, meaning don't, don't get hung up on super fancy details at this point. Because you got to make sure that everything is how it should be in terms of value and tone and... Um, the proportions. Uh, so, already I'm probably feeling like my pencil isn't sharp enough. So, um, I do sharpen my pencils a lot. Uh, which um, is probably more than most people do. But I like a really sharp pencil. Um... Partially because that's how I do a lot of blending, is with the pencil itself. Um, just very soft lines over top of other soft lines. Sort of like cross-hatching, but without the lines being noticeable. Um, so I've decided that this area has probably gone a little bit too dark. Um, and as I said, I can't go back over it with white charcoal. So I'm going to come in, see if my kneaded eraser does the trick it does. Um, if not, I could certainly use one of my click erasers um, or my electric eraser. But this actually needs to be even a little bit more white than, than that. Um, often you'll see that in my drawings I do uh, a white or, or a dark in the background. A lot of times I don't know what I'm going to do there until I've sort of started. I just kind of let it come about organically and sometimes I don't put anything there. Um, I will normally try to address it before I get too far into the especially into the hair, because I have to work one way or the other. Um, if you're doing a white charcoal back there or a Conte, um, you have to make sure that um, the hair cuts into the background. So um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this. His face is quite light here, so I don't think that I would want to go with white behind there, but I don't know. I'll think about it, and I guess we'll find out soon enough. So again, you're not, I'm not necessarily um, doing a lot of fine detail at this point. I'm more than anything sort of sourcing out my values because I want to know um, where my darkest darks are, where my mid-tones, where my lights are. So I'm getting a sense. Sometimes if you come in and you make an area too dark right away, you have to go back over. Um, if to erase it, or if start over, whatever. Um, and this way, if you build things up slowly, you get a sense of where you're trying to go with that. Um, he's got this very furrowed brow that we want to work with. Uh, 
Um, I'm probably going to wrap up pretty soon here, but I want to leave you with a couple of um, little bits of advice. One of the things is always look at what you're drawing. Look at your reference. If you're drawing from life, keep looking at your person or the person that you're drawing. The paper has no information on it that's going to help you with the drawing. The only reason to look at the paper is so that you know where your hand is. Um, so a lot of times you see people drawing eyes and they continue to just draw what they think they see rather than drawing what they see. And um, you need to look and see how this person's actual eye looks, right? How do... How does their upper eyelid fold back? What's the overall shape of the of the um, surface of the eye? How big is the pupil? How big is the iris? All that kind of stuff, right? Because it varies by person to person, and that's why we look like we do, right? We we look unique because everybody is different, and uh, it's important that you pay attention and. Uh, Draw what you see, not what you think you see. Uh, you can see in here, I did uh, very soft gray over top of the white charcoal, and that goes quite nicely, um, like I said earlier. Uh, I want to just show you, because people may not believe me, so if I, if I do this area here and I decide, oh no, I need some light, when you go over it, it becomes very muddy. Um, and this is this is something that you don't want to do because it, it some people call it bluing um, And that's something that we want to try and avoid uh, So I'm just gonna erase that because that was never intentional anyway uh, So I just keep building up values and tone and uh, notice how and here he's got these sort of his his jowls almost um, have some volume that we want to address. And um, I know that I shouldn't, but I use my finger a lot. Always this finger. I don't know why, but by the end of the night or day, I've always got a black finger um, covered in graphite. fair amount done in uh, not too long a time. It looks like it's been about 20 minutes. Um, I'll keep working on this probably in the next few days and post it sometime later this week. Um, but hopefully that was helpful. And uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave something in the comments. Um, yeah, hope everybody's having a great day, weekend, weekday, whenever it is that you're watching this. And uh, thanks for tuning in. Bye-bye.